the Liberal Party and what looks like an act of desperation is now going after Pierre Polyev by saying that he's bringing U.S. style politics to Canada. This is the, as usual, unhinged Ryan Gerritsen <laughs> taking to Twitter or taking to the House of Parliament uh, press conference to say that Pierre Polyev is uh, a MAGA right wing. Let's just hear what he says. You know, I think what Canadians really need to reflect on right now is where Mr. Polyev has taken the Conservative Party of Canada. We have now seen not once but twice in the last two days the importation of this far right wing American style politics that's traditionally been occupied in the space of the MAGA movement, we're now seeing this being imported into Canada. Why on earth would the Conservative Party of Canada and their MPs turn their back on Ukraine right now in their time of need? It can be explained by nothing other than the importation of far right politics written by the hand <laughs> okay, of ill very ill defined far right politics somehow far right politics equals um a being against ukraine now what does this actually come down to so it comes down to the conservative party not voting for uh this bill from the liberal party and this is their attacks here pierre poly have conservatives turn their backs on ukraine in their time of need bringing far-right American-style politics. What does this even mean? Well, it takes a minute to get to the bottom of what they're even saying here. Here's uh, uh, Karina Gould uh, saying her piece. Why did the leader of the opposition direct his party to vote against the Canada-Ukraine Free Trade Agreement? Is it because there is a group of Conservative members of Parliament who are pro-Russia and anti-Ukraine? <laughs> uh, wow, okay, well, it really comes down to that. Now, in the House of Parliament, uh, reported by the Black Locks reporter, Speaker censors Jake Stewart, MP, uh, for calling NDP Hamas supporters amid a protest of double standard. No censor of Karina Gould for calling the CPC Russia supporters. So uh, clear uh, partisanship on the part of the Speaker of the House. But what is the actual story here with the Ukraine thing? The U the now, mind you, a number of Canadians don't want to be involved in this conflict whatsoever. But the Conservatives are, in fact... Uh, just as involved as the Liberal Party when it comes to this, but they made a, a particular uh, stance that they're not going to enforce uh, carbon taxes on the Ukraine. Right now, we're having a debate in Parliament about what Ukraine really needs. Conservatives think Ukraine needs weapons. Liberals think Ukraine needs a carbon tax. Years ago, Conservatives negotiated a free trade deal between Canada and Ukraine. It was a good trade deal for both countries that emphasized trade. It was aimed at strengthening opportunity and prosperity in both countries. Again, it was a trade deal about trade. In the past, Liberals have often opposed free trade, but now they have this new idea. They call it progressive trade deals. That has become their coded language for turning trade deals into binding international agreements to advance their preferred policy agenda. Liberals don't want trade to be about trade. They actually want trade to be about liberal ideology. There you go. And I'll leave a link in the description. You can watch this whole video in its entirety. But what is it with this uh, right wing and uh, mega politics, US style politics? Pierre Polyev, if you look at his Twitter page, he posts about stuff like this. Trudeau bragged when interest rates were at historic lows. Then he spent half a trillion dollars and rates went up 10 times. Now Canadians don't know how they're going to pair their mortgages. Wait, this has nothing to do with right-wing politics, does it? This is a comparison of the town halls, Trudeau versus Pierre Polyev. This is a really funny one. Oh, what a crowd. Great to be back. Thank you. Thank you. Doing these town halls is probably one of my favorite things uh, in this job. So Not with for that, the audience. Uh, thank you for showing up. <laughs> when Justin Trudeau came to Niagara Falls, Tony is such a local champion. He was even willing to put aside partisanship to give Trudeau a tour around the falls. He was just, he would do, which proves he would do anything for the area, right? And anyway, he was standing near the falls. He was standing near the falls. Everyone's speaking. Nobody's really listening to each other. 
<laughs> Boy, the indigenous people sure gave a warm. Anyway, I'll leave that one in the uh, in the description down below as well. You can watch that in its entirety. But if you look at Pierre Polyev's uh, Twitter page, this is his official Twitter page. He's talking about uh, all the things. Are all these things right wing MAGA things that he talks about? Ontario food banks uh, shatter record in 2022 with demand being driven by working Canadians. Finds a new report. Okay, so he's talking about. Uh, meeting up with other Canadians for cultural events, uh, nearly $6 million in food bank visits in, in the past year. Crazy, nearly $6 million food bank visits. These are the things that he's talking about. Is this right-wing MAGA? <laughs> no. This is things that Canadians are concerned about in Canada. These are big things. I gave $15 billion to a multinational company so they could hire foreign replacement workers instead of Canadians. Vote for me. <laughs> well... I don't see MAGA in this, but hey, let's look at the conservative, or say, let's look at the Liberal Party and the NDP versus the Conservative Party. This meme was great. The Liberals bring Hillary Clinton to their convention, and then the NDP brings Bernie Sanders to their convention, and then they accuse Pierre of bringing American style politics to Canada. I don't remember Donald Trump coming to the Conservative convention, I don't remember any US. Uh, mainstream politicians coming to the conservative convention. But hey, let me know in the comments down below if you disagree. But this is reflecting on, I mean, all of this is is a reflection of where the poll numbers are. The poll numbers are showing that the conservatives are in a massive lead. If there was an election tomorrow, we're in super majority territory for the conservatives. Uh, Marty up north, commenting on this on Twitter, Trudeau's popularity has been in a free fall since the end of summer, as Canadians are waking up to the fact that his policies have had disastrous effects on the economy, high interest rates, high inflation, unaffordable housing, rising crime, drug, drug epidemic, etc. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description. He's, he goes on further. But he does go on to say that Jugmeet's unpopularity, or sorry, Jugmeet's popularity still doesn't translate into seats. Quite the contrary, the NDP and the Liberals are vote splitting the left and handing more seats to the Conservatives. At this point, the Bloc Québécois could conceivably become the next opposition party. That is embarrassing. That's absolutely embarrassing. So what is it? Is it is it the Conservatives bringing U.S.-style politics when they're talking about purely Canadian issues? I don't know. The, uh, conser the, the Liberals keep bringing all kinds of stuff. Here's something that the Liberals are bringing to the table. The average fab family of four in Canada saves up to $27,000 per year under our government. Pierre Polyev is not worth the risk. He says five ways family could save up to... A family of four saves up to $27,000 a year under our government. Here's how. A bunch of the benefits that they give out to people. Um, I call shenanigans on this one. I said, show me one middle class Canadian that is $27,000 better off than eight years ago. I'm a father in a family of four. And I will tell you straight up, this is BS. <laughs> this is absolutely BS. Uh, especially considering uh, most of these things... If you're to be eligible uh, for this, you, you have to be not working at all. You'd have to be uh, less than part time uh, as an employed person to get any of these benefits. If you're a middle class Canadian, you're not eligible for most of this. So <laughs> that's not even the case. And not not on top of that, this is none of the stuff that Pierre Polyev is talking about cutting. The cutting that they're talking about is the exorbitant spending that the Liberal Party has been doing on frivolous things across the globe, not uh, not benefits for average Canadians here at home. I don't think that's been on the the cutting the chopping block at all. But that's not stopping the media from doing their rounds because this is where they're at. They're terrified. Andy Lee, special rapporteur, putting out there on Twitter saying, the panic is setting in and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to watch. Watching all of these, <laughs> these media agencies targeting Pierre Polyev because we all know that they're uh, they're <laughs> essentially the, the, the attack dogs for the Liberal Party. Now, the... This escalated quickly, says Tracy Wilson on Twitter. The Blacklocks reporter reporting that the government of Canada is talking about just giving out free houses. Okay, well, are are they are they even able to do that? The government should pro provide a free home to anyone who cannot work, in quotes, says uh, Sean Fraser, the Minister of Housing. It calls the latest taxpayers can do 
It's the least that taxpayers can do in a country as wealthy as Canada. Well, are we wealthy when we have uh, 6, 000, 6 million visits to the food bank in a year? Are we really that wealthy? But I mean, this is just getting ridiculous. And it, it's it, it gets more and more ridiculous the more and more you look at it. This is um, talking about the plastic bans that were deemed unconstitutional, but the Liberal Party is still trying to push forward to ban more plastics in grocery stores that are actually going to cost make the cost of food more expensive for Canadians. This has come from the industry, so really focused on the industry, the manufacturers, the farmers, the truckers. Uh, there's a plastic package ban coming. It's part of the the... I guess the, the Supreme Court deemed it unconstitutional. We'll see what happens. But in the grocery store, that's going to mean elimination of all plastic in the fruit and the vegetable sections and prepared food. The industry has come back to say that's going to cost the grocery industry $6 billion, which will mean a 30% increase of food costs. Can you comment on that? I'm sure you know you, you met with the grocers. They've expressed it to us. I'm sure they expressed it to you. How is that going to make companies more competitive with food prices in Canada? Well, I, I think uh, somehow, Mr. Williams, we can do both. We can both protect the environment and have more affordability and competition in the country. To your point, I have talked to even to the industry, not only to the large manufacturer, the grocer, but also to the industry writ large. And, and spoiler alert, there's no answer to the question. I'll leave a link in the description for the sake of brevity here. But is this the kind of uh, is this the kind of man that the 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 the, the liberals uh, or the NDP are looking for in Canada to move forward, or are they looking for a strong person? Would be remiss to not have that identification. And that's going, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it's an honor to sit, stand today, and rise in support of the motion that my wonderful colleague from Calgary, Edgemont, uh, has proposed. Uh, I recognize my my limitations as a cisgendered man, uh, and recognize that we don't have all of the answers, especially with respect to folks with uteruses. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just had to show that clip because it's so it demonstrates just how weak uh, the men are in our society that the Liberals and the NDP are bringing forward. We need strength, we need leadership, we need to push forward and get out of this. But again, here's some more of the stuff that the Liberals are bringing to the table. Hiring 900 con uh, temporary foreign workers to install equipment at an EV battery plant in Windsor, Ontario will cost Canadian skilled construction workers around $300 million in lost wages and contractors fees uh the leader of the of canada's building trades union says and this is in response to the fifth what is it 15 billion dollars that the taxpayers are paying for this battery plant that the liberals have put forward this is what pierre had to say about this prime minister is forcing canadians to give 15 billion dollars to one battery plant that we now learn is going to employ 1,600 foreign workers with Canadian tax dollars. Now, $15 billion works out to $1,000 in federal taxes for every single family in Canada. You would think that he would read the contract he signed with this multinational company. And if he did, can he tell us the section in that contract that limits the number of foreign workers that get Canadian tax dollars. Yeah. It's just really ridiculous what we've been doing. Now, uh, the <laughs> a reporter asked Justin Trudeau, I, I, you can't even make this up, I'm just gonna let it play. Can your government exercise fiscal restraint at such a time? What are those challenges? Well, first of all, we are a government that has always exercised fiscal restraint. What do you even say to that? What do you even say to that? I'll leave that to you guys in the comment section down below. But clear definitions deserve, or clear terms deserve clear definitions. What is MAGA politics? What is US style right wing politics? Can we get a clear definition of what that means? I would like to know because they're, they're, they're saying this about the Conservative Party in Canada. They're saying this about Pierre Polyev but I don't see any clear definition of what that means. It seems to be some sort of boogeyman. My 
theory of this is is that they want to demonize this to uh, left-leaning voters that are moving over to the Conservative Party right now. There are many left-leaning voters that are disaffected liberals, disaffected NDP, that are saying, I'm, I'm done with this. I'm going to go and trust in what, what, what we're hearing from Pierre Polyev now. And that's where I'm going to put my vote in the next election. They want to demonize this and make those people feel like they're right wing or something like that if they vote for Pierre Polyev. That's my theory on it, and I'm sticking to it. Leave a comment in the comment section down below, and we'll see you in the next one. Keep on trucking.